voting on the minutes that we are voting that um, number 39, that the Thornton Manor report was not resolved, and that will be brought back to committee where it will be debated in full.
does require some alterations to make it habitable and to comply with the building regulations. These alterations include increasing the height of the roof by 130 millimetres, the addition of 3.8 metres per square metre extension, which replaces an existing 8 metre square um, building attached to the original um, barn. The existing conservatory will be replaced by a new lighter weight construction. The National Planning Policy Framework permits extensions and alterations in the green belt, providing them that they do not result in inappropriate additions. The new DP policy GP4 permits a 15% increase in the volume um, for the, to the replacement of existing well, of new dwellings in the green belt. The additional volume created by this proposal is approximately 5.5% um, and is not deemed to be acceptable in this instance. The access to the site will remain as existing and the curvature will be denoted by some soft landscaping, the details of which are conditioned to be submitted for approval. For these reasons, the purpose was considered to comply with both national and local plan policy and is recommended for approval subject to the attached conditions. Thank you. Uh, we don't have a qualifying petition for this particular uh, application. Is there a one council would like to speak on this? Thank you. If I could just ask you to say your name for a minute, please. Thank you, Chairman and Councillor Geoffrey Watt, West Kirby and Thurston Ward. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, members, for coming out on the site visit on Tuesday. Um, a little bit to know what to say about this. Um, I hope you appreciated what you saw when you were there. Um, I felt, as you've seen from the report, that I felt that there should be societies in, in public. Um, while you were there, I asked you to note the form of constru construction of the existing barn and its location smack in the middle of the green belt, a long way away from the nearest uh, property, which in fact is its um, the associated property, which is the, the nearest building right on the edge of the built up area. Uh, trying to look at it as a passerby coming down Colin Road over many, many years, and other local residents have been well done. Um, I think everybody will find it rather strange that this is being allowed for the green belt, but of course, you have your guidelines and have to refer to the National Plan Policy Framework. Um, the history given in the planning statements which accompanies the application uh, speaks of the, um, the Highland cattle which were occupying this land back in the 1980s. The barn was apparently built in 1985 to provide them for some shelter and some as it keeps and fodder for them. Uh, they were a short-lived feature according to the statement they tended to escape. Uh, but they certainly were quite a striking feature as you came down Colin Road to see these very, very strange cattle with their very long horns. Um, the other feature of the land, of course, is the amazing amount of wild birds that make use of the ponds which have been created on the land. Um, and I, I do, I think everybody appreciates that. Um, and they do um, wonder, though, how this piece of land is associated with the bongo. Or the same thing with the green belt. So now here we have an application to convert a redundant barn into a dwelling. And if you go through the <coughs> provisions of GB3, GB4, and the MPPF, you can understand why the applicants have been advised that this is possible. But to the layperson, here you have not a historic barn, something part of a former redundant farm building, something desirable that needs preserving, something solid sandstone which might otherwise fall down because of the change from horse drawn plows to tractors and combine harvesters. This is something built in the 1980s. It's uh, constructed with block work, as you saw, faced on a couple of sides with sandstone to make it look a bit nicer. It did have a conservatory on one side which has been taken down, I think. Persons have been conservatively added to it. So, uh, what was the policy really trying to achieve? Um, yeah, my view is once it became redundant, it should really be demolished and that would be the end of it. But no, here they are relying on the um, exceptions and asking you to give permission to create 
a two-bedroom dwelling in the Green Belt. And actually, I've got to say, it's going to be affordable housing and it will provide uh, accommodation for persons who might assist in the maintenance of the, of the land. Um, I'm not really sure about that, but of course you have to go by your guidelines and uh, that is, I'm sure, what you will do. But I thought this needed to be mentioned in public and if you um, feel like me that this really shouldn't be being allowed, perhaps you will find me to refusal if you can't, I understand. Thank you. <coughs> Can I open this up to Chrissy? Go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. I'm also a West Kerry and Ferguson Ward Councillor, and uh, I have the same concerns over any development in the Green Belt. I'm a strong supporter and uh, champion for the Green Belt, and the fact that it should be kept in that form wherever we're doing anything on the borough. But in this case, I have taken note of UDP policy GB3 looked at the six items, which I won't take the trouble of repeating, but they are on two-thirds of the way down on page 15, if you choose to read them. And really what the policy says is that it will permit conversion or change of use of buildings in the Green Belt, provided that, and then it goes on to give six instances with which this development does actually comply. And in terms of uh, impact on the Green Belt, Okay, you can see it's quite close to Colin Brown, but it's hidden behind some greenery, and it's not going to increase it in height in any way. It's going to be no more obstructive, obtrusive, or objectionable to anybody passing by than the existing building, which albeit is going to be there since the 80s sometime. But uh, I think this is a situation where we have to use a bit of common sense and realise that uh, the use for which we're told is going to be put and the actual uh, appearance of the building itself is such that uh, we should be minded to use some common sense and approve it. It isn't something I would normally do in the Green Belt, but on this occasion, I do think it complies with all the necessary constraints and overcomes the constraints that uh, we would normally apply in the Green Belt application. So I am certainly minded to approve it. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Anybody else? Trina. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I think I'm a bit of the same mind as uh, Councillor Elderton. Um, I went on the site visit. Um, I found it to be the building non-intrusive. I thought that the materials that they were going to be using would be in keeping with the land and that it would blend in. Uh, it's an absolute beautiful uh, nature reserve. If you have been there, I'd, I'd encourage you to go and have a look. Um, it has migrating wild birds. I mean, the owner who is constructing this work is very um, passionate about retaining it and so those who will be residing in that building will be helping him maintain it um, and I think uh, yeah I'd just be a, um, you know I'd welcome any other uh, councillors uh, comments from uh, their visits and what they think <coughs> and I'd be interested to hear what they say. Can you move the next Stuart? Yeah just to on that point, so I, I did look at the planning statement that accompanied the application <coughs> online and it was the issue, and I think the issue that tilts me towards uh, wanting to support the application was the link, if you like, that the applicant was making between the need for the dwelling uh, and the maintenance of the, uh, of the land and the, the use of the land to the, the, the wildlife uh, habitat. But I, I think I would have been slightly happier uh, about saying if we could have conditioned the link between the dwelling and its use to support the, uh, the activities of the land. Uh, because whilst that might be the case now, maybe for the next decade or so, um, it's entirely possible there will be a future uh, use of the, of the dwelling. So uh, we, uh, I did have a, you know, a brief you know, conversation about whether it was linked or whether we could condition. Sure that's impossible. Whether you could condition that in any sort of any sort of way, I appreciate the amount of time that the person or, or the family that the occupier uh, would spend on the uh, on the activities. And the reason why it wouldn't be so great is to uh, as to possibly meet whatever criteria would be necessary to have it you know, formally uh, conditioned as as, as ancillary to the work of the so far, to, to, to the work of the of the land. Um, which, uh, my hope would be that uh, the comments that were made in the plan statement that it would be linked to the, um, to the maintenance of the, uh, of the land 
I would hope that was a bit of a quiet for the city. But the office of Thank you, Chair, through you, Chair. I suppose we have to look at the conditions and the, the, um, the tests and the conditions, and we need to think, is this a reasonable condition to attach when the planning policy does allow the conversion of buildings without them being attached to agricultural use, and will that condition pass the test? But... Thank
A small window extension is also proposed. Um, any additional windows are facing to the yard area, and this is considered acceptable and should not have a detrimental impact on nearby residents. There is no parking within the site, and this lack of parking and the increase of traffic are the main concerns for objectors. The previous use of the site of the, as a police station would have had unrestricted hours, and the conditions proposed would limit the hours of the proposed use and the use of the outdoor play area and the number of children. The nature of the children's nursery is that children are dropped off and picked up at different times, unlike the school school and it could be likely that visitors to the site would ne wouldn't necessarily be at the same time as those dropping off and picking children up from the school opposite. The submitted noise surveys have been assessed by our mental health officers who have advised that noise levels in the garden narrowly avoids um, serious disturbance. Uh, for these reasons the proposal is considered to be acceptable um, with both national and in accordance with both national and local planning policy advice and is therefore recommended to subject to the attached conditions. Okay, we do have a qualifying petition for this um, application. Is the uh, lead petitioner would like to speak on this as well? No, would the ward council like to speak? Yes. Would you like to come forward? Okay. And if again, if you could just take a moment, please. Uh, I'm Councilor Chris Ming from the Rockdale Ward. Um, can I just say thank you very much for coming to the site visit the other day. It was really good to see you. Um, unfortunately, as, as it's August now, you didn't see the area like it normally is, which is quite a busy area. There's a school there. We've also got quite a lot of businesses there. There's a lot of deliveries that go on during the day in the businesses, and there's a lot that happens within the school there. Um, and speaking of being off the residents today, unfortunately, the lead petition was going to come working in Southampton this week, so that's why I'm speaking on their behalf. Um, he has stated that there's going to be 23 staff plus at the site. There is no car park in there. All around the building is double yellow lines, those double yellow lines, is with any parking around the building, which have been there since the year dot, I think, to be quite honest with you. Um, about 18 months, two years ago, we actually had some railings put on payments because there was a lot of potential accidents with schools and you know, children running out so there's a lot of breakages on the pavement so there's fencing all the way down. One of the things that's stipulated in this plan is to put um, a zebra crossing there which would have zigzag lines on which would stop the residents from parking outside their own property. A lot of the properties there have got the driveways so everybody parks on the road. It's just going to be a nightmare. We also have a bus that runs up and down there seven or eight times a day, which is people standing at bus stops. We've got a lot of residents there. I think the thing that concerns me is that there's just no parking facilities for any of the staff who are going to be working there. Eight children, there's going to be three staggered dropping off for them, which is, you know, so if ten parents turn up, they're going to have queues of cars so that they can drop their children off. We're just very, very concerned about the numbers, mainly the parking. Um, <coughs> um, we've had a number of RTAs in the area over the last 12 months. Maybe just mine, I know it's seriously injured, but it's a really bad junction. I, I know you all, those who attend to the site, because it's all the junction itself. The other thing that concerns us is the play area that we're supposed to put there. As you can tell, the building outside hasn't got much space around it. There's no space at the back of the building. There's a high wall there that looks like a prison. It's going to be like, um, if you send the children out, what they're saying, a staggered visit out into the back. It'd be like walking in um, a prison playground, I think, you know, banging their heads off the wall because there's just no space there whatsoever. So I'm, on behalf of the residents, I would just like to ask you, committee would look at this and look at it favorably for the residents and not for the building that's being the nursery. And that's all I have to say really. Thank you. Thank you. Can I go to the panel job to stay here? Then you can go down. Thank you. As I said, um, you can't do it in any No, no, I can't. <laughs>
thanks for that. Uh, this was one of two side visits this week that I thought was really useful in the sense that having looked at the papers before the side visits, I formed an opinion that they haven't seen the issues that Council the Meeting has quite um, clearly outlined to us and seen that for ourselves. Although it is for us, it was clearly a site that is busy uh, traffic wise and there is no parking there as far as I can see whatsoever. So to, uh, to expect 23 staff and 80 families to potentially be using the area uh, for vehicle access, uh, I think would cause chaos. Uh, so I think it was interesting to hear what Council meeting had to say on behalf of her constituents. Clearly by the number of people who've signed a petition, uh, many of the neighbours feel the same. Uh, so I'd be interested to hear what the rest of the Commission feel on this application. But at the moment, Chair, I'm not minded to approve this one at all. Thank you, Ian. Keith, would you like to comment on the, the parking issue, please? Thank you for you, Chair. Um, is that in terms of um, the, the parents dropping off? I think, I think there's a number of things that the, um, we talked about that the zigzag uh, lines um, would create an issue for people not being able to park outside their own doors, um, which I know they don't have a right to do. Of course, um, also, um, are there no parking spaces whatsoever or are there some restricted parking spaces? So if you can just give us the feel for yeah, that, yeah. please. I mean, in terms of the um, separate crossing that the uh, ward, ward member uh, mentioned, there are no proposals uh, for, for a crossing with this uh, application. Uh, there may be some confusion over the drawing because it shows um, four um, of the uh, speed cushions that there are on well lane. And, and you, might, you might get the impression that that's a proposed separate crossing, but it's not. That's four existing um, um, speed cushions that are on well so there will be no zebra crossing, there will be no zigzag lines for a zebra crossing. What we've requested in the, in the conditions that are, that are attached to the, the report, um, condition 13, we've requested uh, a short stretch of limited time waiting um, on well known itself adjacent to the police station. Um, I think we're looking at something like 15 minutes maximum wait uh, at any one time. Um, that's as I say, that's only a short place, that's probably only going to fit about three vehicles in there. There are no off-street uh, parking facilities associated with this development. Um, so in terms of any, any staff that come along, any long-term parking associated with it has to take place on the streets, um, as it does in, in, in other locations around the borough. Um, but I think with, with, um, with developments such as this, the a lot of the staff that go there, it's not, highly paid, it's not a highly paid job, um, so there's not a high, uh, high number of uh, long term parking associated with it. In terms of the parents coming to, to drop off and pick up children, with, with nurseries it's, it's staggered uh, for about two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. And you also have children that only attend for half the day, so um, you, know, you might get parents dropping off. Um, at midday or picking up at midday. So the impact in terms of vehicle movements and, and parents uh, stopping their vehicles to drop off and pick up children isn't as severe as it is, um, for, say for example, with, with a primary school or a mother, uh, that sort of facility. Um, in addition, um, the, you know, there are, there are um, opportunities for link trips there for parents who have got children in primary school and might want to also to, to drop the children other children, younger children off at the, uh, the nursery. And it's in the centre of a uh, residential area, so there's opportunities there for, uh, for people to walk um, and not, not, not actually go in the car. Thank you, Keith. did you want to come back on that? Yeah, I may. Sure. Um, thank the Highways Officer for, for his comments. And just a couple of things really in response to that. Presumably, the authority at some point thought it was worth putting the double yellow lines in um, for a safety issue. And so I don't see why that issue is no longer concern that we can now introduce um, short stay waiting for this particular site. Um, in terms of the pay of the staff, I accept what the highway, what I was at the point the highways office is making, but there's nothing to stop those staff being dropped off by family members and we get into a, a particular situation how the staff been together. Mm -hmm. The fact is if there are 80 children being dropped off or arriving there, some of whom will walk, but there is a, a primary school on the other side of the road where we have as a council introduced traffic calming measures on this road, including parking restrictions. So I don't see why, if that was needed for one side of the road, it wouldn't be needed for the other side of the road for this particular site. 
Sheila? Yeah, um, definitely the same mind as, um, as Councillor Lewis and listening to the highways officers probably made me more even um, more so. Um, and listening to the ward councillor, Councillor Meaden, uh, pointing out that you know it is an extremely busy corner, um, corner spot. It has a children's school opposite. There is double the lot restricted lands, and they're, they're there for a reason. Um, the fact that it has three car parking spaces is, is, is inadequate, to say the least. Um, I do have words for refusal, um, but I will be you know open to hear the councillors' uh, comments. Stuart. Just, I mean, just on the issue of traffic, uh, it's okay to uh, have his officers' remarks. The, the, the problem right that you wouldn't get the same level of, of, of problems that one would find outside the primary school. And the problem with this is the primary school across the road. So we're effectively saying there are problems, so which we, we accept after most primary schools, and we're going to add to it uh, with another, um, uh, with, with another um, uh, facility. The, the, the key question that I wanted to just explore is, is from environmental health. I'm not sure I've ever seen environmental health comments in such terms that, uh, that, that it's so close to the um, to World Health Organization serious disturbance standards. I haven't seen that. Uh, again, when, when I'm around, I'm trying to decipher the, uh, the acoustic uh, report that came with it. And I assume uh, the um, the noise, the noise level causing the serious disturbances that what they would describe as MSR2, or H4, rather than no, I guess that's the case. Looking at the measurements taken, am I right in assuming that the serious disturbance occurs at 55 um, decibels a 16 hour period, etc.? It seemed to me from the reports that they had produced. The, it doesn't fall short, it hits, it's equal to 55 dBA over the 16 hour period. That being the case, then it's only equal to, or it doesn't. But uh, I, I would certainly, certainly have thought that uh, even if it doesn't achieve serious disturbance, one would have thought that this is a tiered, a tiered thing where the next one down is, is maybe not serious, but it's still in the realms of some sorts of disturbance. So how does all that sort of stack up? What, what are the noises that fall out of it? Um, and, and what does it fall with them if not serious it must fall within something else? Like and am I reading the report right that they, they have measured it at 55 and if 55 is the uh, is the trigger for serious, why am I saying that it's reached serious disturbance? Thank you and the three for you chair. Yes. 55 is the level, um, and, and as he says there, um, if it is that or level um, is equal to it, um, that could indicate that there would be serious disturbance at the neighbouring properties. Um, as it's so close well, on that level, um, that is why um, the suggested conditions um, on limiting the, um, uh, bearing in mind that's over 16 hour. Um, Time period. That is why the um, suggested conditions are limiting the, first of all, the number of children, um, and secondly, the, the periods which they are there to play, and thirdly, there's a condition um, asking how, how play is going to be managed. Uh, and I think it's only on that basis um, that there hasn't been a, an objection from uh, environmental health. We didn't feel that with those conditions we would have a sustainable reason. To refuse it. There's also a condition on um, on a boundary treatment, albeit there is a very big wall um, around the, the playground. To be. There is not much more on the sort of boundary sort of treatment. Um, I think there are conditions six and nine. Uh, did you want to come back? Well, well, it's only that I recall on appeal at the fourth on the that the issue of disturbance to the neighbour, which wasn't as great as, as this, was still a matter that the inspector thought it was relevant um, in, uh, in refusing that earlier case. I mean, I, I accept that, you know, we were attempting to put conditions in place, but I don't feel at this level of you know, it's, it's open air at the end of the day, and who's the power is one we are sure, uh, attenders, in fact, not, 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 uh, not completely, but that point also was one that was discussed um, by the inspector. In, in, in so far as Fort Home Lane was um, uh, 
was um, uh, was concerned. Um, yeah, as I say, they, you know, if, if they've measured it at 55, this is they've measured it based on the time. So they've measured it based on time to time over the three hour period. Which, incidentally, if we're thinking about managing it, that's 10 children outside for 22 minutes and no minute longer, and then back here and another 10. That's that's all management. I mean, even if we attempted to to condition that, that would be a condition that would be on a more of a breach. It's absolutely no question. It certainly is a full home there. So uh, you, you know we can certainly try and put some conditions in, but if they're if they're just plain ridiculous, then you know we think we would sit here and just assume this actually isn't going to happen. There's no way the culture is upset for 22 minutes. They bring them in and put them in another one and stop it. And it's just not going to happen. Now, if we're talking about this level of real noise, where it's been brought to our attention that we're, we're I mean, you're saying so close, they've measured these are their measurements. A 55 dBA. And a 55 dBA is, uh, is the trigger for serious disturbance. It's equal to or greater than is, is, what it, uh, is what it says, what it was equal to. So therefore, it isn't just missing, it is hitting serious disturbance. And I just don't feel that the conditions uh, that have uh, been put in place would any way mitigate that. So, on my, from my reading of this, you know, I could accept the uh, could accept it and, I, and I push. The fact that people would have to drop children off somewhere in the area and walk in or, or whatever, that, that's uh, subjective. These are measurements that have been put before us, these are, these are factual measurements. And um, on the grounds of disturbance, I'd be happy to refuse it. Thanks, to David. Uh, yeah, just very quickly, Chair, having listened to what was said, I went on the side with it and I've just concluded that it was an inappropriate development at the wrong location. I will be voting against it. Thank you. Pat? Thanks, Chair. I just had a comment and a question about some of the conditions. Um, I mean, given the concerns about parking, which I totally understand, um, it's disappointing we've had condition 12 is to condition cycle storage. There's no provision in the existing plans for adequate cycle storage. <coughs> condition, seven, condition 7 says that within six months of the first use, um, a full travel plan shall be submitted. So my, my question really is, why have we not insisted on a travel plan before we've had to come to a decision about this application rather than waiting six months? I would have thought it would have been much preferable if we could see the travel plan beforehand. I'm um, just wondering if officers could assist on that. condition that, that I particularly ask for, to be honest. It's based on a standard um, condition that we use for travel, for full travel plans, and normally with a, um, with a, with a major development, with a large development, a framework travel plan will be submitted with a transport assessment or a transport statements, and then the full travel plan will follow, um, follow when, when the development is actually up and running, and, um, and, and they know where people live this sort of thing. So this development wasn't of a scale that required transport assessment or a transport state, so no framework travel plan uh, was submitted. Um, so as I say, this standard condition would normally follow a framework travel plan, and hence the six months is already a framework travel plan there uh, in, in, in place as part of the actual application itself. Yeah, I don't know if that helps, Councillor. Um, I, well, I would just say that I think given the predictable concerns that are around parking, it's disappointing that the applicant hasn't made more of an effort to explain how um, staff and parents want to access the building um, without adding to the, the, the pressures that already exist. I mean, one, one of my concerns with um, 